Woman frantically shoving mice into baby's mouth. The baby was so scared that it cried out. The father stood by and watched, but did not dare to stop him because the child was his illegitimate son. But that was only the beginning of their crime. The man's name was Sosuka. He was the best lithographer in Japan at the time. Married to his wife Mei for seven years, but never had any children. This printing workshop was also a gift from his wife. A gift from his wife. In those days, Sosuka was a man with a lot of energy. The business was doing well. He often had to entertain in taverns. That's when he, he met Kikuyo, a waitress. They fell in love at first sight. Sosuka agreed to raise Kikuyo. In seven years, Kikuyo gave birth to three children for Sosuka. Oldest son Lala, daughter Yoshiko, youngest son Shoji. When Sosuka's business was good, Kikuyo used to send money to Kikuyo for support. But it didn't last long. Large, more advanced printing factories were opening up all over the place. The small workshop was overwhelmed. In addition, there was a fire in the store, which destroyed most of the machinery. Sosuka's income was in decline. A few months passed, Kikuyo lost his income. If he didn't receive any more money, his children would starve to death. So he came to Sosuka with his children. As soon as Kikuyo entered the house, she specified that she was looking for her husband. When Sosuka came down from upstairs, the three children immediately gathered around and called for their father. When Sosuka saw this scene, he was immediately dumbfounded. The more shocked person was his wife Mei. Suddenly she was overwhelmed by the prospect of becoming a mother. At that moment, Sosuka felt ashamed of himself. He kept kowtowing to Kikuyu and confessing his mistake. Mei couldn't bear to see this anymore. Every slap she gave was loud and clear on Sosuka's face. Mei wanted to kick Kikuyu out, but she wouldn't leave. She had no money and no place to go. The child's father was here. She wouldn't leave. In the middle of the night, it was so hot and stuffy, Kikuyu couldn't sleep and made a lot of noise on purpose to lure Sosuka over. But as soon as Sosuka tried to get up, his wife pulled out a knife and threatened him. Sosuka was like a shrinking turtle. He hid under the blanket. Kikuyu saw that this did not work. He was furious. She threw a feet on the spot. She pushed open the door of her room, yelling at Sosuka for being an asshole and threatened to leave the child here. After saying that, she immediately took her bag and left. The next day, Sosuka took the three children with him. Sosuka found the place where Kikuyu lived, but the building was already empty. He had no choice but to go back the way he came. He stood in front of the house, but was afraid to go in. Sosuka knew Mei would never accept his three children, even if she couldn't have them but wouldn't want others. Mei looked at the three children like they were the gods of the world. Whenever there is a little movement, they will be beaten or scolded. Sosuka saw that it didn't dare to stop them. He was ashamed of Mei, so he let her go. Even on this day, his youngest son Shoji, because he spilled the rice pot. Mei was abusing him, Sosuka only asked her to stop. He didn't even dare to step forward, but the family worker couldn't stand it anymore. He took the child from Mei's hands. The children had a hard time. Sosuka was not a human being either. While taking care of the children, feeding the men cooking, he also had to take care of the business of the store and his wife's emotions. He was so tired that he didn't want to move a bit. On this day, Mei was picking up something, a piece of cloth fell down. It happened to cover Shoji, who was sleeping. Sosuka took one look and went downstairs. Mei looked at the child and looked at the cloth in her hand. A wicked thought came to her mind. The child was smothered alive by the stepmother. Not only was the father not afraid when he saw it. Instead, he felt relieved. That day when Mei was picking up the goods, Mei accidentally put a cloth on Shoji's head. Sosuka, who happened to see the scene, and his wife looked at each other. Without saying anything, he left. Sosuka went out to look for Kikuyu. He couldn't find him after asking for him. He didn't return until it was dark. When he returned home, he found his wife's eyes were averted. She even turned her back and didn't dare to face herself. Sosuka went upstairs in confusion. He found the cloth still covering his son. When he went to remove it, only to find that his son had already died. Perhaps out of fear, he hurriedly picked up his son and ran to the hospital. But it was too late. Shoji's life remained forever at one and a half years old. When he returned home, his wife said sarcastically, You must be relieved. One of your burdens is gone. Sosuka's heart was saddened by the thought. It was so easy to get rid of a person. The two of them were getting crazy ideas. Why don't we get rid of the other two as well? That day, Sosuka took his daughter out to play. She was going to be dropped off halfway. Sosuka told Yoshiko to go play with the toys by herself. But Yoshiko wouldn't let go of her father's hand. So he showed his daughter her favorite doll. When his daughter was fascinated, he quietly got up. But Yoshiko, who was alert, noticed right away. He put down the doll and followed him, seeing how alert her daughter was. So he took her to the restaurant to eat. During the course of the conversation, to find out if Yoshiko knew her home address. When she couldn't answer, Sosuka even smiled a little. If you can't do it once, do it again. Sosuka then took Yoshiko to the Tokyo Tower. Her daughter was interested in the telescope. She was very fascinated by it. Sosuka liked that it had to go to the bathroom. But then he turned around and went into the downward elevator. When Yoshiko reacted, the elevator door closed just in time. Sosuka's heart was in a panic. It couldn't stop trembling. 
he came to the bottom of the tower and looked overhead, but he was afraid that his daughter would come after him, so he rushed away from the scene. In the next few days, La La was late in seeing her sister, so she came to ask Mei. Mei was handling her sister's belongings at the time. It was impossible to tell him. La La then came to her father. He kept asking questions, so Suka got tired of the questions and shouted at him. His sister was already living with someone else and threatened him to behave. Otherwise, he would be sent away too. That night Mei secretly gave Sosuka a bottle of poison. La La was six years old at the time. Not only did he know their names and addresses, it is also possible that he knew that something had happened to his brother and sister. Mei feared that La La would turn herself in. So she ordered Sosuka to get rid of him immediately so as not to have other troubles. La La. On the other hand, he sneaks into the train station. He returned to his original home and saw that everything had changed. He remembered his mother again. At night Sosuka and Mei were restless because La La had not been seen until then. They panicked. They were afraid that La La had gone to the police to report them. Every second was a frightening one. Just then, a siren sounded outside the window. When the police appeared at the door with La La, the two of them pretended to be calm. But they panicked. But La La didn't turn them in. The two were relieved to know that the father put the poison on the bread. The son took a bite, only to find it was bitter. Immediately spit it all out. I did not expect the father did not feel guilty and continued to stuff his mouth. Luckily, a passerby passed by at that moment. That's how he escaped, seeing that the plan failed. The couple, so they began to plan their next accident. They carefully cut out the markings on La La's clothes and instructed Sosuka to find a sparsely populated cliff to push La La into the sea. This way the three burdens are completely solved. That said, Sosuka the next day, Sosuka immediately took his son on a trip. La La thought his father had changed his mind. He was unprepared. The two of them finally arrived at the beach. La La stood on the edge of the cliff and watched the waves. This is a good opportunity to kill him. But having lost children in quick succession, Sosuka hesitated to do it. So he planned to stay for a few more days. But in the next few days, they watched fireworks, they went to the beach, and ate good food. Sosuka found that he didn't hate children so much, and grew to love La La. This day, Sosuka took his son, came to a secluded cliff. La La was walking too fast, and accidentally slipped and fell. Sosuka was so scared, that he immediately went to check. At that moment, his son was standing on the edge of a high cliff. The bottom is the bottomless sea. Sosuka just a little push, everything will be fine. But it didn't do that. He pulled his son back from the edge of the cliff, and so the two stayed together, until the sun went down. La La was so tired that she fell asleep in her father's arms. He couldn't wake up. So Suka saw this and put his clothes over his son's face. He finally remembered the purpose of the trip for the future of himself and his wife. This son must not be kept. So Suka picked up his son and walked to the edge of the cliff. He took one last look at his son, immediately let go of his hand. La La just fell off the cliff. So Suka hurriedly threw all of his son's clothes into the sea. He ran away in a hurry, but to his surprise, La La survived. He was rescued by a fisherman. The police found all the tags on the child's clothes had been cut off. It was obviously a murder, but when questioned, La La wouldn't say anything, seemed to be hiding something, insisting that she had fallen. But just then, a print shop owner came to the police station. He saw the stone in La La's pocket. It was a rare piece of lithograph. It had a special design on it. The police also followed the trail and found Sosuka. But when confronted with the identification, La La insisted that Sosuka is not his father. He wanted to make his father happy. Sosuka could not hold back any longer. He finally confessed in pain. He knelt in front of his son, sobbing uncontrollably, asking for forgiveness. Sosuka went to prison, and La La was sent to an orphanage. End of story. This is based on true events. Human nature is always the most terrible thing. It can be kind at times. The bottom line can also be lower than people can imagine. Many people lament, why don't you have to take a test to become a parent? Since you are a parent, you have to be responsible for your children. This is an adult parents should be aware of.